What is up guys? We are back with another skills validation video. Today we're gonna to be going over presser dressing auxiliary, right? There's three different types of presser dressing. So you got the auxiliary, you got the neck, you got the inguinal. We're gonna make a video on each of those. So stay tuned, right? These are all skills that you can be tested on as a 68 whiskey uh, once you get to the whiskey side of things, right? So again, what I need you all to do right now though is like this video, comment down below what you're most excited for about being a 68 whiskey combat medic healthcare specialist, right? And last but not least, subscribe to this channel if you are not already. Even if you're not signed into your YouTube account, just take the two minutes that it takes to sign in and subscribe. It really helps us out. And uh, I just want to introduce our demonstrator. You guys have seen him in past videos, Sergeant Zuniga. Uh, he gives out great information. We got our casualty back there who you see in a minute. But uh, without further ado, let's get to the pressure dressing. All right, guys, back again with another video, right? I'm gonna be reading off step by step what y'all need to know uh, for this specific skill. Again, take it with a grain of salt. Your instructors may teach you different AIT, and I highly recommend listening to your instructors because they're the ones that are gonna be grading you, so it's better to take what they're saying as opposed to this. This is just to give you a general idea of how the skill should go, so feel free to uh, learn a little something today. So this is going to be pressure dressing auxiliary, which is a fancy term for like armpit, pretty much. So first step is take a BSI, which you can see Sergeant Zuniga has done. Second step is expose the injury, assess and check for an exit wound. So he's exposing, you see an injury, okay, see right? An injury right here. Yep. Okay. And now pack, uh, step three is pack auxiliary wound with combat gauze and verbalize assistant to hold pressure for three minutes. In this case, his casualty is conscious, so he will inform his casualty to hold pressure. So as you can see, he's packing the gauze, guys. He's doing that fancy method he taught y'all in one of the last videos. Uh, hands are free and it's easily accessible. So he's packing it up. And uh, during this time, guys, feel free to like the video, subscribe, and comment down below what y'all think of this series so far. Are you finding it helpful? Uh, is there anything we can do to make it a little better? Uh, things like that. Uh, we're, we're only up here for a week, guys, because we also have to revalidate on these skills as well. Uh, but yeah, so now that he has that packed, the evaluator is going to say bleeding has been controlled, so you're good on that. Okay. And now step four is going to say ensure the gauze extends one to two inches above the skin, right? So he's checking, yes, that is at least one inch to two inches. And now step five is going to say place six inch elastic bandage over soldier, I mean shoulder, my bad guys, leaving tail parallel to the arm on injured side with remainder of elastic bandage covering packing material and going in the anterior direction. So I know that was probably a lot, but you guys will understand it more once Sarnzuniga actually does it. So the biggest thing for this one to be able to get your hands especially free for it because I'm going to be, so I'm going to be messing with this is you can grab the patient, grab his armpit, just close it right in there and just apply pressure with your body. Yep. Especially if the patient is also lying down, right? From here, I'm gonna grab my, uh, the A strap. I'm gonna lay it over his shoulder. And that's called leaving a tail, guys. Right? Twist it 45 to where the roll is facing this way, the anterior portion of the body, coming down, right? Patient, can you hold your shoulder for me? And that leads into step six, guys, which is pull elastic bandage taut over packing material and wrap tightly around the injured shoulder. Now right. you also want to make sure that the ace wrap covers entirely all of the gauze from all sides, like bring it all, like uh, spread it all across. Yeah, you don't want any of the white gauze protruding. Coming up. Right, so now he's gonna go, and you're gonna wrap over a minimum of three times, guys, or three wraps. And this may depend on how big the casualty is because you might have some dudes with big chests and you might not have an excess of ace wrap, but uh, just take that into consideration. And so step seven says maintaining tension, continue to wrap across the back, anchoring to the opposite shoulder. So I'm gonna come around here so once he wraps around, y'all can see what that means, right? So you got it, three wraps, he's coming over. Figure eight position. Yep. You're gonna go anterior to the body, going over his shoulder. So you're going over, and you're coming Pull it top, under with it. Come under. And you're coming back, all the way right? Back. So now you have that portion right there, and this is where that tail that you made in the beginning comes into play. So now you're going to tie a non-slip knot on the remainder of the elastic bandages, which is what he's doing right now. And so once he does that, 
the evaluator is going to go ahead and say, prepare the casualty for transport. And it's at this point in time, you will grab your tape and you will secure any loose endings like that because you don't wanna be moving this casualty and those come undone for any reason. So that's just something to consider. And there we go, see that's not going anywhere now, right? And so now the next step is gonna be swath the arm to the torso. And so swath is pretty much a fancy word for like secure or tie down pretty much. So as you can see, he's coming over and he's keeping that arm like in place. He's stabilizing it that way. It's maintaining pressure while it's pushed against him. And should he be moving, it's not gonna be disrupting the bandages that he put on. So a lot of the reason for this is because this is a pretty painful uh, thing for the patient. And a lot of times they're gonna try to relieve that pressure by putting their arm up. The whole point, if they if they do bring their arm up, it's going to not apply as much pressure on that artery. And we wanna maintain that artery pressure. So that whole uh, pressure bringing the arm down is going to, it's not gonna help the patient for comfort, but it's gonna, it's gonna save them in the long run. Yeah, and so the final step, guys, for this that you do verbalize is continue to assess the wound for further bleeding. Continue to assess the wound. All right, sweet, and that is pressure dressing axillary. All right, guys, again, hope you like this video. He's gonna be taking care of him, removing all that stuff, right? Again, if you like this video, throw a thumbs up right now. Show that support, it really helps out the channel. Comment down below what you're most excited for about being a medic, and let me know if you guys are liking this series so far, right? Uh, I think it's very informative to all you future 68 whiskeys that are going out there because I remember <laughs> coming in and we had to do skills validation. We were all nervous. We were like, we're gonna mess up, things like that. So hopefully this gives you a general idea. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're not signed into your YouTube account, please take the two minutes it uh, takes to sign in and actually do that. We would greatly appreciate it. And uh, we will see y'all in the next one, which is going to be pressure dressing, pressure dressing. I can't even pronounce that, Jesus Christ pressure dressing uh, for the neck wound and the video after that is going to be for the inguinal area but uh stay tuned and we will see y'all in the next one later